This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Well, hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees and I'm thrilled to welcome Olympic champion choreographer, Emmy Award winner, director of Stars on Ice, creator of Battle of the Blades, Sandra Bezik. Sandra, welcome to the skating lesson. <laughs> well, thank you. It's so great to be back. Yes. I um, was one of your first, I you think, were. wasn't I? Way back, yes. yes. I was <laughs> so actually I'm thrilled to be back. <laughs> I was actually remembering when I met you. I had done an interview with you. And I was standing online to get a credential at Skate America when I was in college. I didn't even say anything. And you came up and you said, well, I know who you are. And I said, <laughs> I was like, how did she know? <laughs> so funny. Well, yeah. this is a very exciting time. For those of you who don't know, Sandra is actually choreographing a show in Virginia. So tell people what you've been up to. Because I know last year you worked with Nexus on their program. Yeah. You worked with Lewis. A little bit, yeah. You worked I was fairy godmother. I just, you know, sort of. <laughs> Popped in and out, yeah. You were with Luba and Dylan this year on yes, your program. with David Wilson, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing a tank show. So yes. are you getting back into the choreography bug? Are we going to see you? Well, never say never, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, I, yeah. hmm. <laughs> how do I answer this? I love to do new things. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and I love to work. It's as simple as that. And if something comes along and the timing's right, I say yes. I say yes way more than I say no. And um, the the tank show actually has been a real real experience. Last year we launched it. It's at Williamsburg uh, Bush Gardens at, in Williamsburg. And um, the reason why I did it in the first place was because it was a chance to reunite with uh, lighting designer Ken Billington with whom we did Boitano Vit, Stars on Ice for a whole bunch of years. And he's an old and dear friend. And I love working with him. We hadn't worked together in 15 years. And he was he was a lighting de designer. So I thought, wow, you know, this, this. And also, I'd never done a tank show before. I'd performed in them, but I'd never made one before. And this is a storyline, 25-minute Christmas story. And um, so I was really, I really felt challenged by it. And... Uh, last year we opened and, and, um, it was, it was a challenge. It's an outdoor venue. It seats 5,000 people that this ice surface is, well, essentially 40 by 60, sort of that kind of, um, pad. Mm -hmm. And, um, last year we kind of felt like we had, it was, it was successful last year, but we felt we weren't finished. And when we went back to do it again this year, because it's, it's going to run for a couple of years, we completed it. And I just, um, I really, really enjoyed it. And, and what, what's exciting for me is that it seats 5,000 people. It's an outdoor venue. It seats 5,000 people. The, the park, the theme park is packed for their Christmas town right through to the new year. And they start out with weekends of three show days, three or four shows a day and uh, in the evening. And then around Christmas holidays, they do the whole run uh, every day. And so we're getting, what, 10, 12, 15,000 people through to watch that show every day. And th this is an audience that's not a skating audience. And um, last year and this year, I told the cast, Remember, this could be the first time this audience is watching skating live for the first time and, and make them fall in love. You know, this I just thought it was a huge opportunity to reach a public that we don't normally reach. And, you know, maybe all those little kids will go home and say, can I, you know, ask Santa for skates for Christmas. Um, so it's it's um, it's a sweet show and it has a lot of heart. Elvis is um headliner and and uh, he does a great job and um i'm proud of it i had fun and it was something new for me so that's what i like to do learn every well, you time you put a video of it online so that we can watch this well i'm i'm sure i'm yeah i it's it's mm -hmm. uh <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a cute little christmas show yeah, yeah. Well, so you, said you wanted people to fall in love with skating, and I think a lot of people have fallen in love with Tessa and Scott in their comeback this season. What do you think of their programs? When are you going to work with them? Are you going to co you collaborate with Marie France? We need to see this happen. Come on. Well, you know, I mean, I'm a complete 
fan of Marie France mm -hmm. and Patch, of Tessa and Scott, mm -hmm. and of the French. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, it, I couldn't imagine being in Marie France's position mm -hmm. right now with, with both couples, but um, I adore Tessa and Scott, and I'd, I'd never worked with them. I actually um, produced a show almost two years ago, and it's the first time that I'd actually done something with them. It was a, it was a quickie. We had, you know, two days of rehearsal, but they were a joy mm -hmm. and so professional and enthusiastic and open to anything. And, um, I did pop in, it could have been just after their announcement of returning. Um, I popped in to watch them with David mm -hmm. Wilson, and, you know, I was like a little fly on the wall and, and they allowed me to come in and it was wonderful to see David and Marie France and, and Tessa and Scott, of course, and they were just starting to work on Latch. And um, I so admire what their approach mm -hmm. from now, how they set their goals and how they're treating this year and next, and that it's a real journey and an exploration. They, they sincerely simply want to develop as artists and any medals any glory is gravy and they mean it i really feel that the the authenticity and the sincerity is there and so um i'm really cheering for them mm -hmm. to so that they can explore different areas and and um create different work and see what happens. It's very much a let's see what happens. And I think they are pushing themselves. I love their new pieces. Um, I think there's room to grow. You've already seen, you know, from Skate Canada to, to NHK, um, the development, particularly in their free program. And it has a rawness. It's so clean and beautiful and perfect. And yet there's a raw aspect to it to them now that their hearts are really exposed and i um i love it mm -hmm. i love it <laughs> i really like the first piece in particular that they use and mm -hmm. i was charlie white does it loves both pieces but didn't know if they go together what do you think of that do you follow the story and the cohesiveness i i think it's such a change to have lyrics come in late i always wonder oh, I because like it. you do okay i do I do because it's unexpected and there are these sort of the, 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 the progression of the relationship mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it hits you um, and yet actually I'm going to contradict myself because it also just kind the lyrics just kind of move in and take it to the next emotional mm -hmm. level of intensity Okay, and I like it. It works for me. Yeah. It does. I'm very in love with the first piece of music. I mean, I really like the program in general. The first piece of music to me is just so strong because you do see a different movement that we never saw from them yes. before. And it yes. feels deeper. It's uh, way deeper. I mean, they were so pristine as competitors. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, there was a shield. Porcelain. There was yeah. porcelain. They were mm -hmm. porcelain. Yeah. particularly Tessa, and she will even make that comment when she looks back at old tapes that, you know, that there's a veneer mm -hmm. there, and it was gorgeous, and, you know, Vancouver was spectacular. But six years later, six years of life lived, it shows, and they're, they're very much ready to open it up and expose their being. No. Uh, so it's exciting. Now, I know that you love rock music. Obviously, we saw all of your finales, Stars and Ice, putting the men in jeans, Sandra. <laughs> I like what do you all make music. of hip hop and what do you make of the well, Prince program? I love I love them doing hip hop. And um, I think they're they're incredibly strong in that area. And uh, do you remember their what was their um, the show number that they did? Justin Kiss. Bieber? No. Was it Kit? No. What am I saying? Um, it was hip hop. It's Justin Bieber from this summer. Uh, that and, and last year. Yes, yeah. they've done two. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. They're just just fantastic. And so I'd love to see them explore that even more competitively. Mm -hmm. 
I feel that, you know, the, the Prince is, is, is a taste of it, but they could do so much more. The Purple Rain to Next me really, <laughs> yeah, the Purple Rain to me it comes alive in that program. It's just perfect at the end of that. And we haven't seen, they have not skated it cleanly yet. There are a couple little stumbles no. and hiccups. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. And it's tough for them to get out there and compete. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so they've got to, they've got to get those sea legs back and you, but they are true competitors, aren't they? I mean, they, you, you can see how, how they've even transformed themselves from one competition to the next and how they've stepped it up. And so, yeah, this is going to be really fun to watch. Yeah. They, they got, they reached a new athletic. Yes. Point because I was wondering after Skate Canada how they would look against the French if they were going to look right. older or more old fashioned right. or how this was going to look and yeah. they they really stepped it up in terms well of and their their styles are so different the two pairs the two couples are are very different from each other and uh, Tess and Scott are more um, are earthier. Mm -hmm. And uh, which you, of course, you would have never said that about them six years ago, yeah. you know, so it's <laughs> nice to see that evolution. Mm -hmm. What do you make of the French and how do you differentiate them in their skating? You know, what stands out between to you? the two between the two, because the judges have to compare. It's a difficult comparison. To I'm make. really, really glad that I can just sit back and love them both <laughs> yeah. um, because I do mm -hmm. for different reasons. And I think the OK. The French make me feel, and I think Tess and Scott make me think um, as an audience. Like, I want to get in there and understand what they're saying, and I'm, I'm a participant in their work because I want to think about what's behind it and what it means. With the French, I'm swept away. And I don't think it's visceral. I just feel it. And I don't really want to analyze it. And I just want to be swept away with it. Mm -hmm. And I love both. I love feeling or, or having that experience with both. So uh, don't ask me <laughs> which I prefer. It really <laughs> comes down to the given performance mm -hmm. yeah. um, of the day, really. And um, because they both are offering up such beautiful work. The French are, um, their, they, their style is something that I've not seen before in the ice dance and that they, they're, they're liquid and they fill each other's spaces and um, the lyrical aspect is so airy. Um, I think the closest thing would almost be like Gordiev and Grinkoff had, you know, sort of this airy kind of, still into the ice, but this airiness about them that's um, ethereal. And um, it, it, I'm fascinated by it because it's, it's like watching dance on ice, modern ballet on ice. Um, but it's, it's unique to them. And they've really created a, a modern um, a modern way of moving in the dance event that is completely fresh. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. I mean, and I was watching because all of the teams now try to imitate this style. Well, and that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. And that's the problem because mm -hmm. it's a compliment. Mm -hmm. But I wish the other teams wouldn't <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know because it's hard i mean but on the other hand i love the sophisticated influence right i mean the dance event is pretty awesome right now how do you compare this free dance to last year there are some people that think that they always stay in the contemporary style i see the <laughs> yeah. sorry i interrupted you yeah i see this I know that they're going more avant-garde, and I see that they are creating the magic more this year where the music did. The music was more sweeping the last two years, and this year they really, with their bodies, create the magic more. Yeah. And there think, is a progression. And yeah. Gabby is shining more as well. I noticed yes. that she, they're utilizing her far more in both yes. programs. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, the, the, the free program last year was 
a moment in time. I mean, it was just to die for. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard one to live up to. Mm -hmm. And also their, their course over the, the two years of their title and then this year and then Olympics, you know, it's not all, it's, it, they're, they're going to feel a few bumps. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to happen. And it did happen at NHK and, and, um, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Cause that's just going to make them better. Uh, I, I like their short dance. I know that the short dance people are sort of, you know, mm -hmm. iffy about it. I, I feel like, again, it's like two ballet dancers interpreting mm -hmm. it, those styles of movement. I preferred it with their last competition mm -hmm. because I felt that they, they were more subtle. Mm -hmm. And I felt that this particular performance at NHK, it looked to me like they tried to push it out and they tried to make it better. And I actually think that the subtleties then got a little lost and got a little sloppy. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the transition from the blues to the swing, last competition, not so much this competition, could be the camera angle too. I thought was genius just because she, she was doing all these fabulously, you know, subtle and elegant positions. And then all of a sudden, you know, she did this like froggy jump right <laughs> in the air. And I thought, I love that. It was just so great. And she didn't quite hit the same transition this time. So I hope they keep it because I just thought it was really, really good. Do you think the um, short dance is the difference between the two teams this year? Oh, well, it's, it certainly started, um, the energy mm -hmm. at NHK, you know, it, it really gave Tess and Scott the momentum. Mm -hmm. That's one competition. Mm -hmm. Let's see the next yeah. because, because the French were a little off. Mm -hmm. They were. Yeah. And so you really want to compare them both when they're both at their best. Mm -hmm. And right now, Tessa and Scott have the momentum, but you know that, who knows? Mm -hmm. They're both fabulous. Mm -hmm. They just are. I wanted to ask you about Capolini and Lenote, because this team, mm -hmm. they've been world champions, yeah. lovely skaters. Do you think they have that veneer that you spoke about Tessa and Scott having, because they always are peppy? Yeah. Do you not well, know who they are as artists? Well, they found a niche, mm -hmm. and with all the romantic, lyrical free dances, they're going to pop, mm -hmm. and it works for them. Mm -hmm. I think both numbers are super charming. I just don't think that they're quite the level of skater, mm -hmm. quite the level of precision. Um, you know, her positions in the air are not quite stretched out. But I kind of, I like their work for them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think they'd get lost if they did mm -hmm. the lyrical romantic yeah. thing that everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. They would just, they, but they really pop and they have a charm and they certainly jump through the screen mm -hmm. um, with that. You know, it's always different when you see things in person. I've said this before, um, but they do their work pops through the screen. I want to ask you a little bit about Hawaii and Baker because they are following that lyrical it's contemporary good, route, eh? but yeah. they really seem to be maturing as a team. I thought this weekend that they, they yeah. to me, I thought they were at a plateau last season. I thought they were at a bit of a crisis in terms of identity of where they were going to go because we had seen them do a similar vehicle. And to me, they looked way more senior. I, I saw the the future for them. I agree with you. Holy yeah. knees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got knees. Yeah. Uh, well, they both do. Mm -hmm. um, I really like them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I I like them. I liked um, I liked the abandon mm -hmm. and the aggressiveness. Uh, um, you know, they have the challenge of being almost the same height, mm -hmm. which is what it is. Um, but they they work well, really well together, and uh, I like the I like their work. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed them. Yeah, and they, they, she has some serious deep edges going on in their patterns. So I liked that. I noticed. I noticed. And they, too. Oh, and they really, yeah. they, they just, yeah. it's like, ooh, I want to go on that ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk.
talk about your discipline because you're so known as a choreographer, but you were quite the pair skater. And let's please, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, Google. How, how happy Google. are you that you didn't have to do throw quads? I mean, oh, well, <laughs> throw it. Yeah, no, no. I mean, hey, I'm you know five inches too tall for any of that, but um, and, and not to mention the weight. Um, well. Megan and Eric are extraordinary mm -hmm. and they've taken full advantage of the system mm -hmm. and made it work for mm -hmm. their taste, their drive, their what they are, what she stands for. And ha they've pushed pair skating to this place that I just can't imagine. I just can't imagine it. Their, their performance last year at Worlds, I mean, just with technically and then the um, passion behind it was something that I'll just never forget. Um, and they've made it work for themselves. And she's, you know, they don't, they don't, I, mean, I think he, with another girl, would could be way more lyrical. Mm -hmm. But that's not what they are, and all the power to them for being who they are. And uh, I just admire um, their personal strength and, and ability to compete. Now, NHK wasn't wasn't a good week for them. Yeah. So what? <laughs> yeah, she posted a lot that um, you know personal life. You know, things have been going on the last couple of weeks. And I noticed that the programs seem tense, and I've seen the programs in person. And to mm -hmm. me, the one thing I notice about Megan and Eric is that because people always comment that they don't match, but in person, there's a real strength to them in their skating, yeah. in the positions, in the power yeah. that you don't necessarily see from some of the other teams. And that's yeah. one thing that doesn't come across for them on, on TV. On camera. No. no, you're right. You you are absolutely right there. Because um, when they do those side-by-side -side Lutzes in person, it's with a ton of speed, a ton of power, yes. and it's lost on the camera. It's completely. it's 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 overwhelming to watch, and and then as soon as you know little mistakes happen, just like with everyone else, you you see weaknesses. But that's with everybody. As soon as something happens, you know, they can't be perfect all the time, and they, quite frankly, you know. They're going to be looking at Grand Prix and they're going to and Worlds. This is early in their season, and it, it to me it was just a blip. Um, I mean they they they've chosen a direction, and and it works for them. Would I like to see them match more? Of course, um, but last year at Worlds. <laughs> when they are on, they have. I mean, a, just, yeah. yeah. When they're on, when they're it's on. really works. Um, yeah. In some of their performances, think about Skate Canada last year, Worlds, you know, Worlds the year before. Yeah. They have a freedom when they're at their best confident. Right. And, you know, people criticize mm -hmm. skaters for not trying to be versatile, for not trying. And, you know, they have tried to do something more romantic and lyrical in their free this year. Mm -hmm they probably will go back to what is more comfortable for them for next year. All the power to them for trying mm -hmm. um, and for pushing that direction. It's, it, it, it's not to me, I preferred the program last year, but again, you know, you can't do the same thing every time. And, and um, so yeah, I respect their choices. I just do. And, and, she to me is just <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is that. yeah i i remember going to um canadian championships and I, I was for some reason i was the one who who got to give them their flowers or their medals or something in the ceremony and just the light and they weren't on the top of the podium or maybe they i can't even remember which level they were on the podium but her eyes were just <laughs> so filled with excitement and drive and um, desire that was like, holy, that girl? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to win stuff. And sure enough, uh, they have. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. 
Well, let's talk a little bit about Hong and Jin from China because this is yes. an incredible story. The Chinese、yeah. powers that be switching、yeah. them. They're cute, though, huh? They're cute, and the thing that amazes me about the Chinese is that, you know, in the U.S. we have teams that are in their third year, and we're still calling them new teams. This team's been together less than a year. They're already competing for Grand Prix titles. Is this the fact that they're in the same system with the same technique that they can just kind of switch up? Switch yes. Up? Yes.、Um, America doesn't have that history、mm-hmm. in that. That kind of、um, surrounding, right? The, those those centers to to produce like that, and you know they all come. They're all cut from the same cloth, so they can they can switch around. I still think that it's going to take years for any team to become a true pair.、Mm-hmm. It, it, yes, they might be able to do the tricks overnight and that sort of thing, but to really gel. And to gel as、um, as competitors, because you know it's one thing to just skate with someone else; it's another thing to compete,、mm-hmm. holding hands with somebody new. And it's very rare that a pair can just step in and、um, and just be that. You know, I think it takes years to develop a partnership. I、um, but I love their short program.、Mm-hmm. And that was super cute. And、um, you know, they have they seem very young to me. And、um, filled with potential. I think the long is really interesting. What David did by having them do the double axles on the, almost like doing the twizzles in the other direction, and then yeah, and he chose that、yeah. he wanted the focus on the man in the free, and that he chose the the male singing、uh, the umbrellas、mm-hmm. of Cherbourg, and I really、mm-hmm. like the detail in that program. It's unexpected. Oh yeah, and and you know with David, I mean I'm a super fan with David and. I、worked with him once this year, and I—I I mean, David's always been brilliant. I feel like he's hitting even a higher level. Like I think he's outdoing himself now with really great work, and it was so much fun working with him with、um, Luba Van Dillen. It's just、um, we're we're kind of two peas in a pod, and we can bounce off each other really well. But he's.、Uh, His work is really, really beautiful, and with Jave,、um, so clever,、um, so thought out,、uh, to a whole new level. Would Jave be the star of your tour if you had to、uh-huh. pick one man, Sandra? <laughs> well, you know what I if I had to pick one man,、um, well, you know, well, I take. Javi, I'd take Yuzu, I'd、mm-hmm. take Patrick, like you、mm-hmm. know, just、yes. and then we. I, what I always love to do in the tours is make a show or numbers specific to the talent we had to work with,、mm-hmm. so、um, you know, and find vehicles specific to them. That was what was so much fun was you know doing something specific to Kurt, doing something specific for Christy, and so on.、Um, so. I mean, I would be a kid in a candy store with any one of them.、Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about Hanyu because he's when he hits a position on those quads, it's some of the most glorious, beautiful things you've ever seen. This year, there's something where I notice in his programs, he looks down a bit when he skates,、mm-hmm. and because、mm-hmm. Prince is bringing him out of the shell, I think that the program has room to grow still. I don't、yeah. see. Prince, yeah. When I what、watch. I like about Yuzu, I mean, aside from the extraordinary jumps, is he has a sense of theater,、mm-hmm. and he he knows how to work it, and he has a casualness about him that is, I think, really compelling. And yet, on A bad day, it can get sloppy. You know, there's a fine line between casual and sloppy. And on a good day, you just kind of stand back and you go, "Oh my goodness," because he's it. it there's it's effortless.、Um, I think I think the sh- the short program has room to grow. I think the free program is high risk、mm-hmm. because. When you when you go for something lyrical like that, that's just you know music driven, movement driven, and and and、um, it, you can't afford to make mistakes. And I and、um, so 
it is something new for him to experiment with. But um, he, I saw him at the cricket club the other day doing the short program and, you know, the, the quad loop and just <laughs> – <laughs> And, and just the sense of style. He has a sense of style and a sense of theater. And um, it, he he brings something, I think, uniquely his own mm -hmm. to the stage. The casualness that he does those triple axles is yeah. out of yeah. here. But even, you know, the moves and the focus and the, you know, the thing that the, just his way mm -hmm. is um, pretty compelling. You can't take your eyes off him. The one thing I miss in this free program, we talk about that theater, is that he ended with the footwork last year and that mm -hmm. warrior machismo look yeah. that he gave yeah. at the end. And yeah. with the programs, because they're doing four quads, are they... Right. I know, I know. It starts to look a little empty. But you see, I think this year, mm -hmm. they're all out there just trying to get the quads. Mm -hmm. This is the quad year. Mm -hmm. Let's, you know, let's get them under our belt. And then next year, I bet they all go back to more detail in the program, maybe back off on the high-risk elements. I don't know. But I think this is the year all the guys are focusing, pretty much all the guys are focusing on getting those extra quads in. And there's always a trade-off, isn't there? I mean, if you're, if you're going for the quads and you don't have them all under your belt in a performance, you, you have to give up on performance. You have to give up on, on choreography. And uh, that's the trade-off, you know, and that's a coaching strategy, and and I don't see another way around it mm -hmm. uh, if that's what you're pushing yourself to learn. Mm -hmm. I think with Nathan, I notice, really, mm -hmm. this problem. Absolutely. It's tunnel vision. I want to land these jumps. Yes. But we all know what Nathan is capable of. Mm -hmm. And what is he, 17? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's got so much time to grow as an artist. Now is the time for him to really anchor those jumps so that they do become as consistent as possible. And then, you know, watch out. Now, the funny thing about Nathan is that he rose to the scene as a young kid who was winning mm -hmm. everything, but he had this performance quality then right. that I think right. will come out again later. Absolutely. That they have to tap in. Yeah. They, they have to... They have to make the jumps, or at, I don't know if they have to, they've chosen mm -hmm. to make the jumps the focal point this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I respect that choice. Mm -hmm. We know he can perform. Mm -hmm. We know he can skate. Mm -hmm. It's not all happening quite yet, but it's going to happen in a year or two. And um, he, he's, he's going to be, you know, pretty significant. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you make of Jason Brown? Obviously, he had a hiccup here. This was not yeah. his best competition. After some very strong ones, it was a little bit surprising. But yeah, I haven't seen all his work this year. You okay. know, because I've been, you mm -hmm. know, in my own other life. Uh, so I haven't seen everybody in all the competitions. I'm mm -hmm. not a real skating geek, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you. <laughs> um, but. Um, so I haven't seen all his work, and I, 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 I'm not even going to comment on NHK because it just mm -hmm. wasn't a good time mm -hmm. for him. Yeah. And I, I'm a fan. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that he, he had a rough season last year mm -hmm. with injuries, correct? Um, yes. So let's just give him some time mm -hmm. to get his sea legs. Yeah, it was, he was skated very, very well at Skate America. Um, mm -hmm. You can see it, yeah. Yeah, and it was yeah. just... I mean, he was almost going to make the final. It was just surprising oh, to see okay. him finish. I mean, Jason usually makes maybe one mistake or two. It was just yeah. unusual, a bad kind of freak thing, yeah. hopefully, for him. But, you know, so much is asked of them mm -hmm. now that I, I'm no longer surprised at several mistakes. You mm -hmm. know, years ago, one or two mistakes was like horrifying. Now, look what's asked of them, and they have so many competitions. Mm -hmm. They have to peak so many times in the year that it's just impossible really to sustain that level, especially when, especially when you're working new tricks, new jumps, you know, learning new skills and, and, and trying, you know, doing the mental count of all the points. So just, it's a lot's asked of these skaters. I want to ask you your opinion on the under rotation calls because the rule was originally written that it was a quarter or more 
and you would get the carrot or the half turn or more, you'd get the double. But now the rule, it seems like the interpretation of the rule is anything, any hook on the jump gets that carrot. And with Mirai, Tom Zakrajic said to her when she got off the ice that this was your strongest free program this year. And yeah. she, with a, I think four triples were called under rotated in that performance. And I was wondering what you, have they gotten to microscopic you know to that's pretty microscopic i thought she had a great performance yeah um and oh gosh what a heartbreaking piece of music eh mm -hmm. her free program i mean <laughs> i liked again you know it's david i i i liked the choice a lot because it was really um putting her heart mm -hmm. out there for you know to either get trampled on or <laughs> <laughs> yes and it just made her so vulnerable and I, I really liked that. Um, and she had a great skate and yes, I do think, I just think that sometimes when we get so caught up in the minutia mm -hmm. that we lose the bigger picture. And that's, that's my frustration mm -hmm. with um, the judging and the system and all of that stuff is that, is that it, it's so difficult for the skaters to keep the minutia in mind, mm -hmm. have that performance, give that performance that transcends and survive it. And um, I think by penalizing Mariah's performance, for example, um, it, you know, you kind of, well, you lose heart. Like, how much more do you have to do? Yeah, okay, it's got to, you know, it's just like, ah. You to know, me, I, she I, had the moment, you know, and she that. Had, she had a moment. She created a moment. She, in, in any of us who have watched her over the years, you know, have lived through the roller coaster of moments up and down with her. And, and uh, you know, I, she, did, she wasn't then rewarded for the moment. And I, I feel that the moment should count more. Mm -hmm. I do, and, and um, even with minor mistakes, because it is a performance sport. And yes, yes, I know you have to judge it, and, mm -hmm. but there is that, you know, I've said it before, that magic moment that needs to count. Mm -hmm. It needs to count. That's why the public loved figure skating in the first place. Because I saw two girls that finished ahead of her, and both are good skaters, but they didn't have the magic, they didn't have the performance quality, the extension, the things that are supposed to count in skating. Or even the stop behind the program. Yeah. What I like what that David, that's gotta count for something. Yeah. I mean, Mariah had almost an old school program with the spiral yeah. at the end, it was yeah. choreographed to the music. It, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the little things, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. What did you make of uh, Anna Pogorelia, who won here? Um, she's lovely. Mm -hmm. Um, she's lovely, and she she. I liked her short program a lot. Um, I liked her costume a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, the free program. Um, and again, you know, this is maybe something in person versus on camera. She's not engaged, mm -hmm. and um, I know it's really difficult to be engaged when you're doing mm -hmm. all that you're doing. But I miss that, and I want. I mean, she's so beautiful, mm -hmm. all of her and her skating, that I just want that mm -hmm. a little bit more from her. And I think um, the fact that they chose the music that is based on Memorial Requiem, which was Pasha Grishuk's music, when you have that comparison, that's she's young and yeah. beautiful and eighteen, and it, it shouldn't. Should, she's not ready to mourn. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I I agree with you. I yeah. I agree. Um, and yet she did a great job. She did a great, you know, she did a great job. And she's is a girl who took the most horrific falls in the world last oh, season. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. She can really fall. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now. I mean, you know, she's statuesque. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I mean, I'd work that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd work it. it. You know, if I were choosing a I think she uh, vehicle for her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, no, no. I mean, I just, what was really nice about working with David mm -hmm. with Luba and Dylan this year was 
I could, you know, it was a team effort and I, it wasn't all sitting on my shoulders and, and, um, when it all sits on your shoulders like that, you know, it's, it's, it's got gut wrenching. Mm -hmm. It's gut wrenching even when you share. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. (laughs) 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 Yeah. (laughs) What do you make of Satoko Miyahara? Because this is someone whose jumps have been really put under the microscope by the callers. I mean, she, I think, probably went into the world championships last year expecting that she would likely medal, and she skated well the same way she had the season. The caller really... I like her programs a lot. Yes, okay. I like her presence, her performance, her engagement Mm -hmm. a lot. Does she remind you of Yuka? Uh She does, Um, but you know, the skating skills are there and and that's where I feel, well, I mean, you know, she she won silver, right? She Mm -hmm. was silver, right? So that was fair, Um, but that's when you want all of that to mean more. I think the choreo, you know, sort of all of that, that thought behind the program and thought within the program as you're performing it. Because, you know, it doesn't matter if you're moving all around, if your face is just not understanding why you're moving all around. And she seemed, she really was um, committed Mm -hmm. to the choreography and the message of the piece. Uh, So I feel that that should be rewarded. Mm -hmm. That's a general point. With Rukawa Huguchi, who is an amazing up and coming talent in Japan. Are you confused by Scheherazade as the choice for her and the program? She's 15? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The program and the music and the costume, the music and the costume wore her. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) And what did you make of Maria Satskova, who's coming up? She's lovely, isn't she? Mm -hmm. She's lovely and young, too. Mm -hmm. Um... Same thing. Like I think, I think, I mean the lot, the free program. She seemed to really try. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, she's she's just a one. And, and all the Russians are so strong mm-hmm. and good little competitors, um, young and filled with potential to really take it to the next level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think sort of as an overall note when things just get too busy for busy's sake, that's when my eyes glaze over Mm -hmm. and I don't fully appreciate what they're doing. Well, as we wrap up, what is your hashtag MK moment of the week, Sandra Bezik? (laughs) My hashtag MK moment of the week. Um, Oh my goodness. Well, you mean from NHK? From NHK. Yes. Um, Okay, let me think about this. Uh, well, yeah, hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, the Tess and Scott are the obvious. Mm-hmm. They are the obvious. But Mariah's piece of music in the free program broke my heart. Okay. And in a good way. Mm-hmm. And um, I admired her push through that. Because I think that was a really personal journey for her. And I admired that. So how's that? I agree. And because Tessa and Scott are the obvious, I'm going to go with Mirai and Karen Chen doing old school spiral sequences in their free skate. Because... Oh, yes. Yeah, I know. Can I say something about... I really wish there was a rule Mm -hmm. that you could only grab your blade a couple times in a program. Mm -hmm. Two? Maybe. <laughs> I don't get it. Okay. Do you have any other rules you would like to instate? <laughs> oh, I got it. gazillion. Rules for everybody else and none for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ban the, the, the song Feeling Good, especially with the blues this year. Uh, I am not feeling good anymore when I hear this. I am done. Oh, I am uh, just... <laughs> I know. But, you know, like, as a choreographer, you just want to keep... like. I mean, I've made comments about Carmen before, but, you know, give me Carmen a hundred times and I'll try and con- con- choreograph it a hundred different ways, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, 
<laughs> Got to get it right. Keep on going back at it. Well, of course you love Carmen. That was your moment, Sandra, that TV yeah. special. So, <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming thank on the you. skating list. Thank this you is so, so much. It's Bye. nice to see you again. Yes. And have a great season. Yes. yes and happy holidays. And yeah, I enjoy your work. You guys are great. Really, really great. Oh, thank you so and much. And good luck. Yes. All right. Bye, Sandra. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>